Hi everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today I want to talk to you about the HEQ5 Pro. This mount was recommended to me the whole time when I uh, first started astrophotography and was looking for a mount. I actually bought an EQ6R Pro but I've always kept my eye open on the used market for any HEQ5 Pros that have come up for sale. I'd like to say thank you to Carl for selling his HEQ5 head. It was a great buying experience and the mount is in really good condition. What I'd like to share with you today is some mods that you can buy for the mount to improve things. I also have a first light to share with you on the North America and Pelican Nebula. I have some future videos and plans for the mount, so stay tuned. My name is Glenn and you're watching Astrobloke. So here's the mount head that I bought, HEQ5 Pro. It's in really good condition. A real bonus is the Rowan belt mod has already been done on this and that would have been an upgrade. I would have uh, definitely uh, been one of the first things I'd have done for it. Um, it's in great condition. The head I will be changing and that's one of the things I'm gonna show you in a moment um, because this will only hold a dovetail bar and I want it to be able to hold Los Mandy plates and also I don't like where the bolts just bite in and mark the bars I like it more where it's a clamp but the first thing I'm going to show you is an adapter that allows me to put this on a set of legs or tripod for an EQ6R Pro my EQ6 is actually on a pier so my tripod was sitting in a corner gathering dust so it's actually really good that I can use them so there's an adapter by Geoptic that allows you to put a HEQ5 head onto EQ6R tripod. And I'll show you that first. Very quickly before I show you the adapter for the mounting onto the tripod, I'll just quickly show you here that the Rowan belt mod was already done. So something I haven't now got to do. So you may have a tripod that you can just put the HEQ5 straight onto, but as I said, I've got EQ6 tripod. Uh, my original EQ6 mount is on a pier, so the tripod is just sitting in the corner. Um, you do need an adapter though to get this to fit. So this adapter comes uh, from Geoptic, and I bought it through uh, Rotha Valley Optics. I quite like the colour actually. I, I was. Uh, looking to see if they did a green one but they didn't and uh, I quite like the uh, dark orange though. It comes with two bolts, uh, one's to attach the adapter to the tripod and the other one is to actually convert the centre pin to fit the HEQ5. The original one is uh, an M12 which is too wide which we go into the bottom of the EQ6 but won't fit on the HEQ5. Now some tripods come with a pin for helping you with your alt as uh, adjustment. Um, my one did have a pin, but it's unboltable and I've used that on my pier. So my tripod doesn't have a pin anymore. So I needed to make one. It's not very difficult. I just got a bit of, uh, well I actually used an old coach bolt, just cut it down. So the thread is there. I've just put two nuts on it so it can be done up. And basically that is it. It just sits on there and the two pins work from either side to give you that adjustment. So you just need to add something like that for that adjustment. Right, let's go and put this on the tripod. Attaching the adapter to the EQ6 R Pro legs is very simple. It just sits on top there. And then you've got this main bolt that locates the side and it's just a allen key to do it up so I'm just gonna tighten that down so that's nice and firm 
Comes with a nice bu clear bubble level as well, which is better than the one that's on the mount. As I mentioned before, the pin in the centre that ties the head down needs this adapter to be put on top as that changes that thread size so it fits the HEQ5 head and that's now ready for the HEQ5 to go on top which we'll now add. So with the adapter now in place <clears throat> the HEQ5 head can just gently slide on top and then we can do everything up to tie it down so one thing I have uh, noticed with this uh, mount is that adjusting the all as with it all done up tight on the tripod there can be quite a bit of resistance there and I have read quite a few people where they've bent the pins on these they're not very thick so what I would suggest with anybody with this mount is that you just take off some of the tension and it allows you then to very easily adjust the all as without putting it too much strain on those on those bolts and then once everything's in alignment you can just tweak it back up So that's the e HEQ5 on the EQ6R Pro legs using the G-Optic adapter. It's quite a nice solution. What I'm going to show you now is a saddle upgrade that I've bought from G-Optic to replace the standard Skywatcher one. This is the other upgrade I bought which is uh, an upgraded saddle. Um, again by G-Optic and I went for this make purely because the colour matches the... Um, adapter I bought to go on the tripod so I'm a bit of a sucker for matching colors so uh, but it, it looks smart so I quite like it you have to buy the puck separately and it just bolts on with these two bolts here um, it's machined nicely it's uh, made to a very good standard and uh, it's got a very nice finish unlike an ADM saddle it's got plastic uh, adjustment knobs here um, they were good quality they were you know you can see they're a, a sort of a a, a heavy duty plastic they've got a nice grip to them so I think actually they'll be quite easy to use especially when your hands are cold um, but that's the only real difference between this and say an ADM saddle which I've bought in the past I've put one on my EQ6 and um, yeah it's uh, it's nice it's going to allow me to put Lozmandy plates as well as dovetail and the nice thing is it clamps it all the way along so you've got a nice secure fit it's a much bigger saddle than the standard one and also it's not going to mark any of your bars so uh, we'll go and put this on the uh, on the mount now as well changing the head is pretty straightforward there are three grub screws um, I think you can see one here I'll undo this one first they don't need to come all the way out but you do need to undo them a fair distance because there's a lip just inside that the head holds on to so you need to make sure you're clearing that lip so there's three in total and they're evenly spaced out around the head hold on to the head when you're undoing them because you don't want it to drop off just in case you've got a nice wooden floor like I have and uh, I'll be in trouble if I put a big dent in it okay so that's the old saddle and this is the new saddle that I showed you earlier I've had it on uh, actually previously so some little marks there but you've got three flat areas there that are evenly spaced out and they line up with the three um, screws that you've got there So once the head is placed on, you just go round again with the three grub screws that you undid earlier. I will just go round, 
get them just to touch um, each of the points and then once all the three grub screws are in I then give them all a little nip just to make sure it's nice and secure we don't need to over tighten it and there we have a nice saddle upgrade that's going to hold not just dovetail plates but losmandy plates it's nice and big as well so it's going to give a good secure base for your scopes to sit on and um, that's a quite a nice nice little upgrade there so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to connect this up to some power and I'm going to plug my actually I'm going to plug the handset that I've got with my EQ6 that I never use going to plug it in and just slew this about and have a listen to it and see how it is So from discussions I've had online, you must make sure that you've got a good power supply to your mount. If the, when I turn it on, there's a solid red light. If that starts to flicker when it's slewing or anything that you're doing, that means that you haven't got enough power to the mount and it will affect its ability to uh, slew correctly and operate correctly. So I'm just gonna give the mount a few movements the Rowan Belt mod was done by the previous owner. It is something I would have done otherwise. But it's very smooth and very quiet. I'm not sure what it would have been like before the uh, modification. But uh, that's moving about very nicely. Let me just see if I can find in this handset how to set it home. Utility, I do believe, oops, wrong button. Park scope. That's good. So I will do pec training with this mount when I finally get it up and running. The only difference between that and the EQ6R Pro is that you must make sure you park your mount at the end of every session before powering down because otherwise it will lose the uh, PEC training that you've done. So you use auto PEC on the EQ mod but uh, I'll, um, I'll show you the details of that on a video. Okay so uh, they're the two mods that I bought for the scope um, so it's really ready to start using. One thing I had noticed when I was moving things about is that the RA axis is quite smooth, but the deck axis to me feels a little bit stiff. Let me just uh, release it a second and then I can show you. It, it, it's not bad, but it's, it's smooth, but it feels a, bit, a little bit stiff, so that could cause problems in balancing. One of the things I do plan to do is order the bearings for this uh, mount and do a hyper tune so i'm going to get some figures from my first outing with it see how it guides see what i'm getting and then hopefully with a hyper tune we should be able to improve on those numbers so we'll see how that goes and if that's successful i think i'll be confident enough then to have a go at the eq6 so we'll uh, see how it goes Right, I'm going to get this out in the garden. I'm going to get my Z61 mounted up. I've got the Altair 183M and I'm going to take some narrowband imaging on the Pelican Nebula and the North American Nebula and uh, show you the results. What we'll do now is we'll just load up the uh, mount and uh, we'll get a counterweight on. It did come with two counterweights but um, with the rig I'm putting on it won't need them. So. I'll keep I'll start off nice and light. I might add another weight if we can push the weights up so they're not too far away from the uh, center point so there's less stress. So this is my Zenith Star 61. I've now mounted it onto a lost Mandy plate.
Just got to remember that that has to go that side. So there's a nice action on the G-Optic saddle. It holds that nicely. As I say, it's not overly stiff, but it's not as fluid as I'd like it to be. So um, that will be something I'll definitely look to improve when we hyper tune it. So the further up the um, the counterweight shaft you can get your weights the better. Just through the laws of physics of moving it it's uh, less effort for the mount even if you're applying more weight than a larger weight further back down it is better for it. bit scope heavy which is not bad but we don't want it that scope heavy so yeah the RA's got a nice bit of movement to it but um, the deck is a little bit stiffer than this which um, makes balancing on that axis a little bit harder but we'll sort that out with a hyper tune that looks quite good it's quite nicely balanced right